you can use to manipulate your system, manipulate your differential equation. F, what we usually refer to as drift vector, which is basically the uncontrolled dynamics. So if you switch off all your control inputs, use your system will naturally evolve on its own with this dynamics, F, given by F. Okay. These guys, the, the G's, are what we call control vectors. So each G is the effect of your input U on the system. Typically, x lives in some space, and as you can expect, we'll give it the structure of a manifold here. Typically, in control theory, this is Rn, but actually, um, we can generalize almost all the results to manifolds without losing anything. So, almost all of the results in control theory that you are aware of that are applicable in Rn, they are also applicable to manifolds. So um, x lives in some space, n-dimensional, usually we don't have n controls to control n states, we have less controls, m, so typically m less than n. And as you can see, f and g, they are vector fields, right? So f, g1, up to gm, we can collect them in a family of vector fields, call it F, and this family is a subset of the vector fields on M, right? Our controls U1 up to UM, these are reals, but sometimes they are constrained, they are not, they don't spend the entire, uh, they don't live in the entire M-dimensional heating space. So typically they live in some control set which is a subset of M, the Euclidean space. Because you have bounds in your control typically, right? So U1 cannot exceed some value and so on and so So it's a, sometimes it's called a strain set of M dimensional subspace. So this is why we, if you, if you see here, this is where our X lab, our dynamics, our control set, so uh, this is why we typically define our control system by control system. We'll give it the notation sigma by this triple. The manifold, the family of vector fields representing the dynamics, and the control set. Usually, uh, I mean, uh, strictly speaking, this is con not any control system. This is control affine system. Uh, just on the side here, when we say linear, strictly speaking, we mean Ax. So this is linear in x, A times x. When we say affine, strictly speaking, it's Ax plus b. There is uh, some constant, okay? So uh, this is control affine. It's affine in the controls. If it's linear in the controls, then f is zero which we call driftless system, okay? But here, because we have drift that is not multiplied by any control, so it's not linear, it's affine. It's a little bit of a, a notation kind of thing, okay? Any question? So this is control affine system is defined by this triplet, the manifold, the dynamics, set of vector fields on the manifold, and the control set. And from this picture, you can define right away what is a controlled trajectory. Controlled trajectory of this control system of sigma. So now on, I will refer to my control system by sigma. Is a curve gamma that maps some set in the real line, right, to your manifold such that it satisfies your differential equation. In our language of differential geometry, so this is the velocity of the curve is given by these vector fields. So this is f composed with gamma 
plus I will have here summation just to save some time. So this is G, J composed with gamma, and this is for all T in your interval. And for some control, admissible control, you want up to UM, they must live in your control set, right? So this is what we're gonna call a control trajectory. The name is very expressive. And from there we can uh, define the set of all reachable trajectories or reachable points. What can we achieve? Reachable so set of reachable points from X naught in M in exactly time t. We will give it the name R sigma, reachable sets for this control system sigma, from x naught and in exactly time t. This is gamma of t, right? The final, the, fi the end point of the control trajectory. So it's gamma of t such that gamma is a control trajectory. Satisfies the differential equation abiding by the control bounds. And maybe it starts at your x naught. <coughs> Any question about that? So, uh, the set of, I mean, the name is very explicit. The set of each of the points that you can reach from x naught by this system in exactly time t. And uh, we're going to collect these guys to get the reachable points in at most time t. Of course t is greater than zero. We're gonna give the name R sigma x naught less than or equal t and this is just the union over little t from zero to large t of R sigma x naught and letter t. Any question about that? Any question, guys, about these definitions? Uh, professor, I, yeah. I have a question. Sure. So, can we, you know, I, you know, like, aren't these two uh, sets identical if we allow for scaling of the control vector? These two, which one? These two ones? Yeah. What do you mean scaling? If the control set is not bound, is not bounded. For example, if we have, if we apply, uh, like if we have a bound on the control M, for example, and in time t it allows us to reach a certain distance from the point that we started. If we instead use uh, control M over something or 10, for example, then I still will reach in time t uh, point on, interior of the regional set. Depends on the dynamics. I'm going to show an example where they are not equal. Okay. In, in many cases, they are equal, but there are some examples where they are not equal. So, uh, and the set of reachable points in general, this is what we're going to denote by R sigma from x naught. So this is set of all reachable points. And let's have some examples. So this is example one. You have seen these examples before, so you might want to check your Facebook or something. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, x dot equals u, y dot equals x squared. We said we're going to define our system by triplet the manifold is just R2, the control set is unbounded, is the entire R, and uh, where are your vector fields? Well, we can write these guys as x dot y dot equal something plus something times u, because I have just one control, and I can fill these guys, so this is 1 and 0, this is 0 and x squared, so this must be my f, this must be my g. And my large f, the collection of vector fields, is just the collection of f and g. 
So I live here in two-dimensional space. This is x and this is y. I have unbounded control, and my control affects x, and then x affects y in return. So when I'm asking you what is r sigma from the origin in exactly time t, so I'm here at the origin, and I'm asking what are the set of points that I can reach in exactly time t. What are these? So this is every x and y in the plane such that what? Let's look about x first. What are the set of points that you can reach for x? In exactly time t, given that x dot is u and u is free, it can be any number, 1 million or 0.01, whatever, it doesn't matter. Positive, negative, anything. What are the set of x, x's? Hmm. Come on, guys. X dot equals u, u is free, it can be anything, positive, negative. Yeah, r, right? So x is free. What about y? Very good. So y must be positive, right? Because, uh, yeah, so x can be anything. Well, y dot, the rate of change of y is always positive. So I, I, I can achieve only positive y. So can you achieve all the positive y's in exactly time t? Can you achieve all the positive y's? So for example, can I, I give you this point? I give you, I give you uh, this point, for example. 0 and 10. Can you get to 0 and 10 in one second? Can you do that? Who, who agrees that, yeah, it's, it seems that they can do it? Who doesn't agree that, no, I cannot do it? So the point is, no, you can. Why? Because I can uh, open full throttle X for some time, then uh, negative full throttle X. So I will come back here, and during this excursion, Y is going up, and I can adjust this excursion so that I get here in the time I want, and this is a, an exercise for you. So find, actually, find you for me. Find you that steers 0, 10, from the origin to 0, 10 in one second, okay? By switching, so you do it by switching. Some value, obviously, you're gonna, if you're going to come to 0, you'll have 1 for some time, which is unknown, and then negative 1 for the rest, right? And uh, you solve for this time to achieve the desired one. Okay. So uh, yeah. So this is uh, done now. Yeah. All y positive I can achieve. Interestingly, and this is why the motion planning problem is interesting in itself. Sometimes it's not intuitive. Sometimes it is. And I have to do union with the, the origin, right? Because I simply can uh, stay there. I can do nothing. Any question that this is the reachable set in exactly time t? So let's get the reachable set in at most time t. So uh, this set that we just had is the set of all, you know, but, but we don't have the x-axis. We're excluding the x-axis. Because any motion along the x-axis will entail that y b jump off, right? Because y dot is x squared. Any non-zero x, y will just go up. So I can't live on the x-axis except the origin. So this is the set that we got here. What about in at most time t? How do you get these guys? Well, uh, you got this set for some time, like three seconds. So uh, get all your capabilities before that. What about two seconds and make union? What about one second and make union? Okay, so what are you going to get if you do that? So uh, this set, which is the upper half without the x-axis, upper half plus the origin, this is the set that you have in, say, three seconds. And this is the set that you have also for two seconds. T here is general, right? And this is the set that you have for one second. Okay, get all these guys and make union out of that. What you gonna get? Hmm. What you gonna get? The upper plane. Yes, the same set again, right? So this is, this is what Mahmoud was talking about, is that, yeah, many times they are the same. And also, this is also equal to the set of all reachable points in the respective of time. Uh, 
I'm having a, a question here. Sure. For example, if I have a, a point in the positive x x, can I reach this point? Yeah, and uh, again, I will, you know, I'll reply by the question. I will put it in the homework. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can. I mean, you do switching. You do switching. So uh, u equals doesn't have to be one or any value. U equals some value for some time. The new equals another value for another time, another value for another time. Right. Switching, no, you don't. I think uh, uh, you mean you mean exactly on the x axis. Yeah, yeah. You said what? In the x axis. No, we said no. It's not here, right? The x axis is not included here. Okay. That's what I said. Okay. Okay. I, I thought you were talking about here, some somewhere here. Okay. No, the x axis is not because if you have any non-zero, if you want any non-zero value for x, then it means that you're gonna move from the origin. Yeah. So it means that y dot in some time will have a positive rate of change. I cannot live on the x-axis. Okay. I have the origin only. So this is why I made the union with the origin. Y is not a greater than or equal, just a greater than. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Here I will do another example, which is uh, it's the same system. Remember the control system, control of fine system is defined by the triplet. Manifold, dynamics, and control set. If you really change any of these three, it means a different system. And here is another example. Here's an example. We, we solved it for this system, right? X dot equals u, y dot equals x squared, and we will maintain the dynamics. Maintain the manifold, which is R2, but change the control set to be bounded from negative 1 to 1. And let's see what is the immense impact this change will have on the system characteristics. So again, this is my plane x and y and I'm asking what is the reachable set from the origin in exactly time t what's that? <coughs> so uh, let's talk about x this is every x and y in the plane such that what about x? What is the maximum and minimum x that you can get in exactly time t? Your control is no longer free, it's bounded here negative 1 and 1. Minus 10 t. Minus 10 t, very good. So x is between negative t and t. So this is, here is t, here is negative t. Yes, x less than. Very good. What about y? What about y? Let's study this in a little bit detail. How to get this t for x? So to get this guy, I would have full throttle, right? So uh, I have u equals 1, so x equals t, so y dot is t squared, integrated please one more time to get y, this is t cubed over 3, correct? And remember that I can have this guy as positive or negative, so this is positive or negative, but in either case, y dot is always positive and this guy is always positive. So uh, if I want to combine y as a function of x, this will give me